Hey, welcome to the bridge of the Here's to Us on what you have to do. We spent a great two days here at Myrtle Beach Yacht Club. Just love this place. Went to the officer's club, had uh, dinner on uh, Sunday night. It's now Tuesday morning, so we had a whole day yesterday just to relax. Kind of catch up on some videos. We did some processing of videos. I did a lot of planning and catching up on boat stuff, washed the boat off, and now we're ready to go. And we are waiting, just hit low tide, it's starting to come back up. So I'm timing it because there are three critical areas today. I don't say critical, tricky areas. Uh, one is a shallot, uh, S-H-A-L-L-O-T-E area not exactly sure of the pronunciation on that i've heard a couple different ones and that's about nine miles down so uh, we'll be going on a rising tide and then also we have the uh lockwood's folly which has been dredged so we're you know hit that at a higher tide and then the infamous snow's cut which will catch that at the highest point of the tide and the challenge here is uh, it's late in the day and so we'll be getting in and Planning to take a mooring ball in uh, Carolina Beach. We talked to the dock master there, and he says the mooring ball will be ready for us. And I said we're going to be getting in after hours. He says not a problem. So uh, we'll be aiming to get in there, probably catch the mooring ball about 5:30 or 6 o'clock, and uh, and then have a relaxed night there and figure out what's next. So. Uh, I'm ready, Rev's ready. We're gonna be uh, going through our checklist here and looking things and taking a last minute study of the route, but let's go. We are leaving Myrtle Beach Yacht Club. Those two gentlemen helped us get off the dock because um, it's quite windy out here right now and didn't want to ram into that piling or that beautiful hatteras next to us. So Sam is creeping out of here slowly, facing the wind now. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Sam asked me to watch the boats over here so we don't get blown into them. You got it, Sam. You're good. Plenty of room between us and those boats. It's making the turn. Looking good, Sam. Sam just made a call that we are leaving, exiting this Myrtle Beach Yacht Club because when we had first started out of the slip, we heard a sailboat hail the marina and that they were five minutes out. So we just want to make sure that we're not going to have to deal with them as we go out this narrow channel. No, nothing, nothing yet. I see the sailboat over there. Yeah, okay. We are passing by Cricket Cove Marina. They had the cheapest fuel around. So we went in there, got fueled up, ate at that restaurant over there with the red roof. Snookies. Really good, Very really good. good restaurant. Had a nice short stay there before we headed over to Myrtle Beach Shot Club. So we're coming up on our area, first area of concern here in today's route. And we have the Army Corps of Engineers data on there. We have our route, we have Bob 423's track. And we are now rising tide about 2.1 feet rising, which is good. This is kind of exactly what we wanted to do because um, we also want that snow's cut to be 
uh, at high water too. So uh, we're kind of riding the tide into there and this is the, uh, I guess the southern end of it. And so we'll, we'll ride that tide as we go through these critical areas. So it's working out just great. We're at about mile 333 and uh, probably the next three or four miles here we'll just be taking it slow and watching the depth and uh, making any notes about any areas here and then we'll post them on uh, Active Captain if uh, we need to. We know we're two feet above uh, a low tide so we should be good. He's got his nets in. Pretty tall with those net arms all the way up, huh? Mm -hmm. He's he's coming towards you. Yep. Now we're gonna move over to the side here a little bit for him. All right, get back over. <laughs> 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 it went from 16 to 13, just yeah, like that. Miss Sandra Gale. And they serve a wonderful purpose. I'm a little freaked out by that um, <laughs> map over there. Uh, red there, yeah. Woo. We're good. We got the uh, reds and the greens. We're following that. Looks like that's the way out to the ocean. Yep. See a white sandy beach. And the tide is rushing in. So and a lot of waves over there. Kind of turn in front of us will be picking up. Uh, Picking up some speed as we go along here. Update here, mile 324, and uh, we have the town of Holden Beach, North Carolina. Coming up here, congested area, we're going to slow it down a little bit, but the Holden Beach Bridge that goes out there, and so over to the starboard, way past the homes there, probably about a mile or two, is the Atlantic Ocean. If the weather is good enough, you could go outside a little river and then come into the south port and bypass all of these uh, little tricky areas if you want. And also, during the weekends, which we try not to travel on the weekends in these types of areas, you would bypass all the traffic out here. So, depending on your boat, your experience, and the weather, it's a good opportunity to bypass this. It only adds about four miles, but uh, you'll be able to set a course and uh, sit back, put her on autopilot, and get from uh, that little river inlet all the way up to Southport and uh, maybe have a lunch and a drink as you're doing that. As it's happening now, we're, we're watching the tide. Our plan is working out just great. I'm gonna get in a little le later than what I told the uh, dock master, but he's okay with it. We're taking a mooring ball. Uh, sunset's not till eight o'clock, so we'll certainly be in there by seven o'clock. <laughs> Maybe a shade before uh, seven, so we'll just see how it goes. Lockwood's Folly is the next area, and that has been dredged so I am not too concerned about it. Plus, we are now about three and a half feet above low tide and uh, getting even higher. So uh, our objective really is to be through that snow's cut um, near high tide and it should be kind of slack tide as we're going through there as well. So things, things are working out as planned. Just didn't know how much traffic we would have and how many docks we have to slow down. It is a bit windy and as we go up the Cape Fear River, I'm uh, thinking we're probably going to get a little bit more wind going up there, the way the direction of the wind is coming. So, not that we can't handle on the here's to us with 900 horsepower, just have to stay ahead of it.
Well, here we are at our second area. That's called Lockwood's Folly and the inlet here as we be off to the starboard side. We are getting near high tide. So going through this area, which has been dredged and is well marked out there. You can see all the reds and the greens out there. Plenty of water. It even shows up really nicely on the Army Corps of Engineers and Aquamap. Inlet here. Now, if you're going to attempt these inlets to go in and out, you really have to have local knowledge in some of these, and uh, this is one that I would not attempt. Um, a lot of shoaling in there, although it looks pretty good right here. But local fishermen know it, and the other thing that you can do is you can call Towboat US, you know, study it yourself and have an idea of where some of the issues are. And then, uh, that's my... Uh, three-minute thing here to take a reading. But you can see out here to the starboard side, there is the Atlantic Ocean. And so if you're going to go out there, look at how skinny it is between that red and the green that you'd go out there. Of course, there's a fishing boat out there. They know how to get out there and do it. But you'll have current, you're gonna have winds, and choose those days carefully. Well, we are trying to keep our wake down, but we're also kind of battling sunset here, so not too many people out. What I'm really looking for is uh, anybody working out on a dock or anything like that. So there's boats that are going faster than us, but I just try to do the best I can. Off to the uh, left up here, we'll see a sign for St. James Plantation Marina. And that's a good place to stay in there. And then up ahead, um, about another five miles or so, will be Southport. And once we uh, get past Southport, we're gonna put the here's to us up on plane and try to get in a little bit, little bit earlier. We'll be uh, picking up the Mori Ball well before sunset, but just kind of wanted to uh, get in, uh, have a little bit of margin. So St. James Plantation Marina, mile 315 on the Intracoastal Waterway. Coming up to the Southport Marina, where we stayed last time through here. They had a terrible hurricane that shoved all the docks over to that little building in the middle. Looks like they have recovered nicely. And we highly recommend staying at the Southport Marina. Now, if you do stay here, be sure you uh, walk down and have wine on the porch with the creatures. <laughs> it's worth the visit. Also, down there, there's tons of restaurants. Fishy Fishy Cafe and just a few restaurants. It looks like there's an anchoring area there where that cat is, but we had a really good time here. Yep. Really windy. We ate at the Provision Company. That was very good. Look, you can live here. Another restaurant, American Fish Company. People out on the patio. And there you have Southport. That toe is pulling a barge. We don't see that much. We see pushing barges. Look at that. Colonel. We're at our uh, last critical section of uh, today's trip, which is Snow's Cut. And uh, we're right at high tide. In fact, it's a kind of a slack tide here, which is kind of nice going through. Not a lot of current. The current can kind of rip through here. So you just got to follow the markers and uh, your 
track to here and trust the markers, keep an eye on the depth, and uh, you'll be good. Don't come through here at low tide. Okay, uh, just make sure you're on a, on a rising tide if you can, or at least mid tide, nothing less than that. You can see how close the markers are up there. I got a red and a green. So I'm lining those up. Double checking everything. Rev's up here. Double checking me. Snow's cut. I don't really care for it. It's, uh, yeah, I don't really care for it at all. What is that red and white? That, that's marker? going into uh, that little marina in there. Oh. But you can see um, how close the red and the green are in front of us. Pretty close. Well, let me just tell you that um, <laughs> it's late. We left about one from Myrtle Beach Yacht Club and it's about 6 30. yeah 6 30. yeah it's weird we usually we usually like to do early morning and then um get in someplace early but um we did our second mooring ball here and it was so easy and we're at carolina beach north carolina so change states but um the last time we did a mooring ball. It was our one and only. I wore a camera. I recorded the whole thing. We had a big fight. <laughs> I had to <laughs> edit it. I, I, I don't even know if I'm going to put anything other than looking at, uh, at the mooring ball after it's already tied up. I mean, it was a disaster. So I didn't even put a camera on my head this time because I had low expectations. But it was so easy. There's a big cup on there and a big silver ring on there just fed through and uh, that was it. It so easy. was miraculous. I think I told my mama to pray. I told my sister Vanessa to pray. And of course I was praying like crazy, but um, it was, it was really easy. And it's because of Larry mm -hmm. and Larry has rigged these mooring balls and the lines aren't slimy and gross. Yeah, okay. I only have experience with one other one, but <laughs> um, he has a, a silver ring on it. So I just took one of our lines tied it there, fed it through there, we tied it up, and we are set for the night. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming along. And, and you know, this is trip, what, 226, and it's only our second mooring ball, and we're going like, <laughs> That's pretty good. wow, we should have done these earlier. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks for coming along. Uh, it was um, one of those trips where, hey, a couple critical areas, but uh, we got through them, great. and uh, we're here now, and we got in, and I think in about an hour and a half it's going to storm so we are going to batten down the hatches <laughs> see you next time on what you ought to do